Tania. Hola, eh, you speak Spanish or English for the session? Eh, yo soy portugués, hablo un poquito de español, pero voy a hacer la sesión en inglés, está bien. Ok, no problem. Uh, so, thank you for being here today. Uh, I will let you share your screen and do your presentation. Ok, so let's go for it. Uh, I think that I need to be uh, put as an um, organizer or presenter because I, I don't uh, have yes. the option. Yes, give me one second. Now you should be able to share. Okay, it's okay. I confirm. So let me share my screen. Perfect. Okay, let me know if it's okay. Yes, it's okay. Okay, so I have 30 minutes, right? Uh, yes, 30 minutes. Okay, thank you very much, Dani. So thank good you. afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, my name is Pedro Reis and I come today to present a session about Power BI in Excel together, the best of the two worlds. Um, uh, I am Portuguese, I come from Portugal. I've been to Spain and to Barcelona uh, many times. I've been to Barcelona four times. It's one of my favorite cities. If I wouldn't live in Porto, my second option, I told my wife many times it would be Barcelona. I really love it. I've been many, many times. It's very cool to, to enjoy and it's very near to go like with Ryanair to spend the weekend. I, I love going there and eating some, tap, some tapas and, and just enjoying the, the city. So I am team leader at Natixis. It's a French investment bank and I have experience. I came from as a business user. Uh, and then I worked as business analyst, business intelligence architects. I lecture at the university and I'm one of the leaders of the Power BI Portugal group. We organize many meetups. If you guys want, sometimes we do in Portuguese, uh, other times we do in English. So feel welcome to search for our group at Meetup and also at YouTube and to, to join and come to some meetup. A little bit about the introduction. So our objectives for today, I want to tell you a story about Excel and Power BI. Um, I want also to tell you um, why is it interesting to use both Power BI and Excel to analyze Power BI data sets. I want to demonstrate how to do it in Excel and why, and show some techniques and ideas using DAX and multiple dimensional expressions, and maybe even turn you guys into a super user of Excel and Power BI. So let's try it out. I believe this presentation can be useful if you are a business user or an analyst, if you want some flexibility to do some uh, analytics, ad hoc reports and things like that, or for an IT professional if you want to give options to your end users too. Let's start with the story because for you to understand why to analyze in Excel, you need to know the story of why is Excel so popular? Why do people with tools like Power BI still use Excel so much? So I want to tell you guys about the story of the invention of the spreadsheet. I don't know how many of you know. If not, I think it will be very interesting to know. So meet the two guys who invented the modern spreadsheet, Bob Frankson and Dan Bricklin, uh, MIT colleagues at the, the university. So. I will share about the story of the invention of the spreadsheet. One of the first problems that I ran into was how do you represent values in formulas? Let me show you what I mean. I thought that you would point somewhere, type in some words, then type in some somewhere else, put in some numbers and some nor numbers, point where you want the answer, and then point to the first, press minus, point to the second, and get the result. The problem was, what should I put in the formula? It had to be something the computer knew what to put in, and if you looked at the formula, you needed to know where on the screen it referred to. So the first thing I thought was the programmer way of doing it. The first time you pointed to somewhere, the computer would ask you to type in a unique name became pretty clear pretty fast that that was going to be too tedious. The computer had to automatically make up the name and put it inside. So I thought, why not make it be the order in which you create them? I tried that, value one, value two. Pretty quickly I saw that if you had more than a few values, you'd never remember on the screen things were. Then I said, why not, instead of allowing you to put values anywhere, I'll restrict you to a grid. Then when you pointed to a cell, the computer could put the row and column in as a name. And 
if I did it like a map and put ABC across the top and numbers along the side, if you saw B7 in a formula, you'd know exactly where it was on the screen. And if you had to type a formula in yourself, you'd know what to do. Restricting you to a grid helped solve my problem. It also opened up new capabilities, like the ability to have ranges of cells. But it wasn't too restrictive. You could still put any value, any formula, in any cell. And that's the way we do it to this day, almost 40 years later. So any value anywhere in any cell. So this is the secret why Excel is so popular. And then when uh, Dan Brickley went to, to Harvard, they, in uh, homage to him, they have like a, um, one of the, 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 the rooms is where the invention of the spreadsheet was conceived and the idea came. So they have a, a room there where they signalize this moment of this in, amazing invention. This invention was really important and was fundamental on the launch of the, one of the first business apples that was launched. Then it started to evolve in 2003, Excel. 2007, the ribbon comes out, this part on the top, which uh, many of us knew. Then Power Pivot comes out, where you can already make a model and relate different tables and different entities in 2010. In 2013, Power Query comes out inside Excel 2, the part with M, the part with ETL and Power Query. And finally, um, it comes out uh, Power BI general availability. So it's born in July 24, 2015, uh, with a vision very close to what we know today, but much more evolved. So knowing this, let's talk about some of the use cases why I suggest uh, analyzing in Power BI in Excel. The first thing is, I want you guys to know that it's possible. You have data in Power BI Cloud, you can analyze it both in Power BI or in Excel too. It's the same as connecting to an analysis services cube, a tabular or multidimensional. You just need to download and install a small package. I have a demo here. So you go here, you download the Analyze in Excel packages, updates, you download it. You get an MSI file, you just click on it, click next, 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 install it, you will be good to go. So if we go now to any of the workspaces, I have a demo workspace and I click on the ellipses and click analyze in Excel. It will download a file, uh, Excel file, where if you open, it will open a pivot table connected to your model. So it's as simple as that. That's the first thing. But why is it in interesting to analyze Power BI data in Excel? From my experience, I have a lot of reasons why it is interesting. One of them is sometimes the users really prefer to analyze data in a pivot table format. It's because they have a report, but if they want to change the order or the direction or to drill up or down, sometimes the visuals, they can configure it, but either they don't know it or they want some more flexibility with the tools they are more familiar. They just prefer to analyze it in a pivot table. So it's possible to give them their flexibility. Some of the times they look at the data, they analyze it in Power BI, but they want to do some kind of exports. So we can also automate this without any need of any external tool. Uh, you can also uh, merge data from different data sets from Power BI uh, uh, cloud into Power Excel uh, spreadsheet at the same time and take advantage of the Excel granular referencing like B2 plus B4 minus C1 equals something. You can do that. There are other reasons. You can feed existing reports if you have many data sources. You can do different data exploration purposes or you can configure some dimensions which uh, it isn't configured exactly the way that you need. So I'll do a demonstration about the first uh, four. Let's go and go to Power BI. No more boring PowerPoint. Let's hit the, the, the floor. So I'm here in Power BI Cloud in a demo workspace. And I have a couple of uh, reports and data sets here. For you to analyze in Excel, you can click the three ellipses either in the data set or in a report. So I click here, analyze in Excel. It downloads my file here. So I'm going to open it. Okay. Let me enable all this and hit these messages. Okay. So I open my model and you guys can see here it's just a simple, the worldwide importers, it's a common Microsoft demonstration model. And I can start dragging fields like total sales. I can drag something like the state on the geography. Uh, and I can put uh, some uh, calendar, uh, I think the year in my filters. 
So I can configure a pivot table from a model. So it's very easy and then you can, uh, you know, play with the data, these kind of things. If you don't have the flexibility to do it directly in Power BI, in Excel, it's so easy to do it. So uh, what can we do too? Let's do the same thing. Now we want to cross data from a QA file that you have a quality. Uh, uh, you want to check if the data is good or you want to cross this with another uh, uh, data set you that you have. You can do the same thing for another one. So I will open a second one. So it's exactly the same thing. I will enable all this. And yeah, you can expand here your data and you can also, I think it's some total, yeah, total sales. So I have the data, I can do exactly the same thing from this data set too. And I can put the two together. What I mean by that, uh, let's put here the state too, just for an example. In my data, I can go to the part of queries and connections you guys will see it here. I click right click and properties. So I'm connected to the, my data, my data set that is hosted in Azure. Uh, so I have the connection string here. I can rename it if I want. So this one is my uh, global superstore. Let's call it G store. I can rename it. And if I want to, to, to copy this connection, even if I copy just um, something like this, a pivot table, from this model here, and I, I have another one which I already have open here. If I copy it here, you will see that in the queries and connections of this model here, I have I had already done two uh, uh, connections before to these two data sorts, uh, but I have this one here too. So I can add as many as I want in, a, in the same report. So I already have this tool. I can click, I refresh the data. I can click in a pivot table and I'm actually connected. If my data changes here in the Power BI data set, it reflects immediately. So you guys have the date of refresh here. It reflects automatically here in the pivot table, which uh, is awesome. Uh, another use case too is if you want to do the part of the extractions. So you can double click a pivot table I'll show you guys. And it opens like a, a, a table extraction with your data. You can refresh it. Or if you want, you can even change the query that you have here. I will edit my query. And you can put, you can send MDX queries. You can send DAX queries. If I put here something like evaluate geography, I'll click it here. OK. And I have configured very easily um, a connection which will get me data from any table in my model. I can change this connection. I can change the query table. I can copy it and add a new one. I will evaluate the employee. You can then remove the data that you don't want. You can do this with DAX, with Power Query, and you bring data to Excel. So automation of exports, direct, easy. You don't need any tool. Everything is connected. So going back to the, to the PowerPoint, we already seen many of these use cases. There are some points that are important to have in consideration with this. The first is if you have access to this feature, you need to have a good data set organized. So it must be clean, organized, good naming convention, intuitive. It requires explicit measures. I will just show what this means. And any hidden field or table in the model is not available or by the contrary, if it's visible, it will be um, available. And also the principle of continuity. If you deliver something to the users and they start using it, then you cannot remove it because you will break the model of the users. So let me explain what this means. So I have here um, a report. It's an, another of the reports I have in the cloud. And you see here it has a good look. It looks very cool uh, when you interact with the data. But then there are some problems associated with this model. So I have here like a KPI, count of flight type, and I will see where this comes from. If I click, I think it's here. It's taking just a little bit. Maybe I will show you guys here uh, in, uh, in the in the cloud because it's getting a bit slow here. Okay, so I think it's okay now. So you guys will see here what I mean when I expand. So this here is what I mean by a explicit measure. 
And this here is uh, an implicit measure, is by default the aggregation of Power BI. This one, you are defining it, you are giving it a measure. So when you go to analyze in Excel, this one will be visible, this one will not be visible when you do it in, a, in Excel. And also, if you have a model like this, it's very strange then, the users will see, whoa, the report looked cool, but now you have like a July to December table. This is very strange. They will not understand this model. So you need to make sure that if you enable the Analyze in Excel feature for the users, that they understand what is the data and uh, how to use it. So be careful with, uh, with that. Other thing I want to share is how do we, we enable this feature for the users? Well, we can go to the admin portal if you have access to your tenant, if you are admin of Power BI. You can go to the tenant settings. And uh, I will search here uh, Excel. Not here. I will do the normal search. So where is it? Tenant settings. Excel. Export to Excel. Allow analyzing Excel with on-premises data sets. So I have it enabled. I can allow it enabled for the entire organization or just for some groups or by the country exclude some groups to have this access. So you have to give access for everything or not or um, or not. And then you can control to which security groups. So it's a decision uh, that you need to 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 have when managing this on Power, uh, on Power BI. Uh, so I go back to our demo. Let's continue. So another uh, example I want to give you guys is breaking a pivot table, which means that imagine you want to do something like this. You want for the year 2014, 15 and 16 to have the sales, just the sales. But for 2016, you want to have three KPIs, sales, profit and quantity. If you do it on Power BI, there is no way to do this unless you specify one measure for each of the columns, um, because it will do a matrix and will multiply three uh, years by three measures, it will give you nine columns. So you don't have this option. With uh, um, Excel, you can do this. So let's see how it's possible to, to do so. So I will close these ones. I don't need it anymore. So I will break the pivot. What this means is that I'm going to get one of the pivot tables that is here in this model. I'm just going to use it as a copy instead of creating another one. I will copy paste here. And now I will do something which is I will go to my uh, pivot table analyze. I will go to all app tools here and I will do convert to formulas. I'll convert the filter tool. And so what this will do will turn each of the cells into an expression. And now we can manipulate this cell by cell. As you guys see here, if I want to drag and drop this cell here, I can drag and drop it, put it anywhere. I can change the formula. If I don't want the, the value for Alabama, I can change whatever I have here. I can put Texas. And my cell value here is going to get data from the Power BI Cloud. Maybe this is not the name. Yeah. Texas. It will get data directly from Power BI Cloud and plug it here. I can change the measure too. I can change a lot of things. So this is uh, something that is very, uh, very cool. So and with this configuration, how do we solve this problem here? So first of the, uh, thing I need to get, uh, let me get, for instance, this, what I call a cube member. It's just a slice of the, uh, your data. So I'll put it here. Now I will be able to reference it and get a value and filter it by this dimension. I will do the same thing for the year. I have it here. I'll put it here. 2014, not here. OK, and now I just miss a KPI, which is the sales. I don't even need to, um, I can start exploring my data. So I can start typing cube member. And I select open quotes and it tells me you have two connections, pick one. OK, next, which is the expression? I open quotes. Like this. No. Let me try like here. I think I'm having like a, a latency delay. I will I will type this one and I will put total sales here. Yeah. Okay. So let me try it out. And now what I can do is I can type a cube value formula. 
I will name my connection and then I will cross. I will filter this. I want my total sales KPI and I want to filter it by this and by this and I will close it and it will get the data from my uh, model. Yeah, I think maybe my connection broke at this point. Let me try to refresh it again. Data, queries and connections. Yeah, okay. Now I think it's working. Let me try to demonstrate what I was trying to do. Cube member, worldwide importers, and then Okay, so I can explore, imagine any of the measures that I have, dot, and I can pick it up and bring it to my uh, to my model. So I can explore all the, the model that I have in my data. So with this, if I do some referencing, I fix, I hard code the, the cell D6 and the five, the rows, and the column of the five, then I can plug my formula to the entire matrix and automatically it gets data from my Power BI cloud. And then you can do all this if you want like an indicator, well, total sales 2015 versus the year before, I can configure um, like a percentage, you know, something like this, conditional formatting, um, icon sets, all that stuff that you can do in Excel, whatever you want, now you have the full flexibility. So this is something that is possible to do with this method that is not in other way. So you need to know a couple of things. The functions that we use are curve values. It requires a connection, any number of members uh, or the curve sets, and you can cross any number, but just one measure, just one measure and any number of members. And only one, only one element from each dimension, just the category or the subcategory, but not, of course, the two of them. Just pick the more granular that you want. So lastly, we have also three other reasons to analyze Power BI data in Excel. Um, if you need to do some feeding of existing reports, I will give you an example, or you need to configure some dimensions that are not exactly the way that you want. So let me try to do these two demos also very quickly. Uh, one of them is I have a, a group of salespeople. I already brought the cube members for each of them, the, the people. And what I'll do is a cube set of my worldwide importers and the expression is just all these people. And I will put now, I'll give it a name, like a group, uh, I will put actually the name Mr. John Sun. Okay, so I have it here. And now I can reference it and I can calculate the same thing. I can calculate a cube value, my connection, my um, uh, total, uh, my uh, uh, then my total sales, which is my measure total sales it here and then I can pin that I want the sales by uh, Mr. Johnson it which will get it and if I want for Mr. Smith I can do the same thing I can point to another um, group set and I will get the group and if I change the group say Mr. Johnson is just three people just these three people all your data in Excel uh, will automatically re get, uh, retrieve the data and it's automatic. So it's an, another possibility that we have. And finally, a last demo that I want to show is, well, this is not so simple, maybe how to make it more intuitive. So I want to show you guys a final demonstration, which is I want to go here and uh, configure, uh, I have here some of the Kube members that I got before, like Texas, like total sales, etc. And I can do in Excel is use, give um, any cell and uh, a name the range. So I'll call this cell Texas. And what I mean by this is if I click here, uh, equal to Texas, it will point to the cell here. If I say that this three, one, this cell, two, two, three, if this range, if I call it, uh, range 33, and if I say I want the sum of range 33, it will point to the range that I have defined. So we can cross these two techniques that we've seen. I will call this sales, I will call this uh, cube member uh, year 2016, and now look what I can do with this. So if I want to have like just type and get data in Excel, I can do a, um, a cube value. 
I call my connection worldwide importers and then I say I want sales and I want uh, year 2015. No problem. In a second, I get the data for this. What I can do, another one, a cube value, worldwide importers, I want profits, I want taxes. And it works. Just within seconds, I can get any data that I want from my Power BI cloud into an Excel cell and reference it. And then I can do things like minus uh, multiplied by 1.2 and do all those things that the users want to do then, not so complicated with, with X. So it really gives some flexibility to the, the end users. To sum things up, takeaway notes. Well, uh, analyzing Excel can be very useful according to the maturity of your corporate analytics and self-service BI. So if you are in a stage where the users can access a workspace, create their own reports from data sets and everything, maybe this is not so useful. But if they don't have that option, maybe it's really something that can give them value too. Even huge organizations like Maersk, the largest shipping uh, company in transportation and logistics in the world, recently moved from CSV and Excel data silos to a tool like Power BI. You guys can find the use case by Microsoft in, in the web. Uh, and also keep your models clean, concise, think about the naming convention and what it is to, to come. And if you can deliver everything to your stakeholders, it's great to have uh, some options to do this. And I think this can be a great option to be able to give something to your end users. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for your attention. You have my contacts, reach me. Muchas gracias a todos. Y ahora estoy aquí para uh, questiones, preguntas, tanto en inglés como en español también está bien. Muchas gracias, Pedro. Thank you very much. I don't know if there is any questions for the moment. There are not. Será Excel el próximo SS report service? Well, I, I think that uh, uh, in regards, there are three products. Uh, of course, Excel, there is Power BI, and there is SQL Server reporting services. So, oh, so uh, for paginated reports, each of them have their use cases. I use a lot the three of them. Um, paginated reports is really when you want to configure all this for the users for a report, which you are going to change the parameters, and uh, and then to run it differently with different parameters and send subscriptions. For the Excel is more, I think, for the user to do some uh, ad hoc reports on his uh, on his behalf and do some what if and some simulations. So I think it's uh, uh, different use cases. It's nice to have the two of them. Mm. Okay. They are saying that it was very interesting. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Uh, segura. <laughs> Enric. Enric. <laughs> Enric. Uh, well, I think if there is no more questions, I will thank you very much, Pedro, for your time. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm looking forward to uh, to travel to Barcelona in the near future to, to do a session in person. Thank you very oh, much. Great. You will be welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. Bye bye. Continuation bye -bye. of the next great session. OK, let's go to the next session. So is Ichak David here? <laughs>